Well, it is certainly different animating vegetables because, as you know, they don't have arms and legs. So you end up having to, to think a lot more and, and act more with the eyes and the eyebrows and, and just sort of get that animation into the character. So what would you like to do with your gift? Where we set up each camera shot to mimic the boards that you provide. Then from there we take it and we pipe the animation in so we have a rough idea of what we're seeing. Then we finalize the animation process and then send it off to our lighting team who then makes it look pretty and, and, and colorful. Compositing is the last stage of production. Once all the lighting and stuff has happened, it goes to rendering, and then we as compositors put it all together. It's kind of like making a sandwich. You know, you start off with a piece of bread, then you put a piece of bologna on it, then a piece of cheese. And at the end, if you look from the top down, you have the sandwich. And it's kind of the same way with compositing. It's just a bunch of layers. Every gift is given for a reason. We can't choose which ones we get, only what we do with them. That's one brave flobbit. Well, it was different from other Veggie Tales we've done because it is the one story and it's not broken up into two, and even the silly song kind of overlaps the theme. My precious! You mean the bean? It's my gift! We ended up using a lot of, of 2D artwork, which is something you tend to shy away from in, in 3D. We had a lot of plants, a lot of ground cover that had to be put in and making it look integrated was, uh, was pretty tricky. It would give this sort of grandiose, epic feel with a set having three or four layers. Here we are looking at uh, one of the trees from the episode. This is uh, one of the shots where Randall first sees the tree. Here you see him as you don't in the film. He's just a gray version of the tree. This is what we work with in uh, a program called Maya. He has little controls here, one's for his, uh, his arms, his head, his mouth. So he can do pretty much anything we want him to. What we do is just grab one of these controllers, let's say his, his, his arm, if I want him to say maybe wave at Randolph. So all I have to do is grab the controller and rotate it wherever I want it. So he's saying, hi Randolph, how are you? And I can do the same with his elbow and his hand. It's very slow at this point, so the animators tend to kind of work in a slower pace than what you're seeing on TV. What we do often is do play blasts to see what our work looks like in, in real time, which is the speed of which you see it in the final version. Welcome, Randolph, son of Mandal. The final version, which you're seeing on, on your TV, looks a little bit more like this. Welcome, Randolph. Now we're looking at a shot with the eagle and the eagle was a little more challenging for us this time because normally what we have to do is build the vegetable characters and they're a lot more simple in the way that they're, they're organized. Um, with them it's just sort of grabbing one of three things, the head, waist or bottom. Whereas with a character like the eagle we have to put in a whole working skeleton to make him, to make him operate. So these would be his wings, there's where his head is and his feet. So when we move say a wing, our skeleton follows behind. So it works much like a regular human skeleton would in that it controls his furry, fleshy wings. The final version, which is this. Get your own ride. And there's our eagle, all animated and ready to go. So as I mentioned, compositing is kind of like making a sandwich. So if we start off with the first layer, which is the background, we've got Bob. And if we put those together, we have Bob over the back there. Now that doesn't look very good because he's kind of floating there. So we'll also add a shadow. And by adding a shadow, it makes everything really look like it belongs together. So after I've done all the color correction, adding shadows, Bob looks like he belongs on the countertop. So this is a little more complicated shot from the, from the show. Uh, we still have the same layers. We have like a background. We have all the characters isolated individually so we can have control over them. But this one's a little more complicated because the integration or getting everything to look like it belongs together, uh, we wanted to make it look like a real film. If something's far away, I can make it blurry. The next thing we need to do is we need to add shadows for the characters. So now there's the shadows for the characters. There's all our characters put together. But there's one more thing I want to do to make this look like a real film shot. 
the character that's closest to the camera, um, I'm going to make him a little out of focus because if you were really, really shooting this with a real camera, it would appear to be a little bit blurry. So because I have him separate, I can make him just a little bit blurry, or I can make him really blurry, but that would be going too far. So I'll make him quite blurry now, put him together with the other ones, so then I'll adjust it so he looks like he belongs with the other ones. And then everything put together, you have the shot. So my job as a sound designer is to come up with sounds that uh, are going to match up against the picture and to try and incorporate the director's notes into the show. I've chosen one little section here, which is the door opening in uh, the new Lord of the Beams. I'll just play it. So a lot of people would think, well, that's not very hard to do. You find a sound and you lay it in. But typically what we have to do is put in multiple elements to try and get across the sound that we want because obviously this door doesn't exist in real life. And so we have to try and find elements uh, from sounds that we have and sounds that we record that are going to sell the visuals. So one of those elements is this one here, which is just a bolt and door opening. We've got another element is a little lower. Going down the list, there's a, a large stone door to give it some weight. There's a wooden door for the creek. Another wooden door pitched down. And there's the elements here for when the door actually settles. So all of those sounds comprise up that one door element. So for the stranger sequence, when he first appears, This was a, a sequence that needed to be uh, performed to picture. You couldn't exactly use just a, a regular sound and try and cut it in because the, the motion on the screen is so specific to the action. So this is an example of what we call Foley, where we take um, a prop, in this case it was a, an old umbrella, and we took off the nylon covering that was on top of it and just kind of taped it up. And from this, we can generate all kinds of little noises to simulate his, both his unicycle and the umbrella itself. We also use this to record swishes. When the rain may come and the sun may go, I'll be warm and dry from me head to toe. I'm a lucky fella. I'm a lucky boy. Hoi! <laughs> 